Member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Although I was a little bit disappointed we did not return to the legislature in September, it did allow me to spend more time in Nickel Belt, which I love. I attended the USW Labor Day event, then went to Gogama. Gogama had a big fire. They were asked to declare a state of emergency, but because they're in LSP, they were not allowed to do this, and now they're stuck. Also went to Metogamy First Nation. Metogamy First Nations would like to expand, but it is not easy to move the boundaries of a First Nation. Then I took part in the Dona Speedfield uh, uh, rowing event. She's a longtime volunteer with the Northern Water Sports Center. And then I had the pleasure to attend the Lockerbie Legion unveiling of their incredibly beautiful new cenotaph. Uh, looking forward to Remembrance Day. Uh, this is just, just beautiful. Uh, I'm also excited to share some upcoming event. Walden Cross Country will be celebrating the grand opening of their brand new gazebo, which means that you will be able to change and be outside at the same time, makes it way easier with COVID. The opening takes place on Saturday, October 30th at noon as part of the club ski swap in open house. There's many activities coming up. The National Coaching Certificate Program, the Ontario Cups, all of this takes place at uh, the Walden Cross Country Club. If you've never been there, please drop in. It is just beautiful. You love it, whether you go biking, snowshoeing, or cross country skiing. Come over, speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We often come across leaders selflessly giving to the community, but they have not been organ have not been recognized enough. Thanks to Karen Merck for introducing the portrait of, of giving to honor these leaders. Partnering with York Region, leaders are nominated and selected for awards. They openly recognize with a reception and photographic exhibit to capture each recipient with a personalized portrait and story of selfless giving. 2021 marks 12 years of celebration to the leaders in our community. I am proud for the four recipients from Richmond Hill. Raj Sethi, he received the Lifetime Achievement Distinction. Raj founded the York Region Indian Seniors Club in 2006 and had been working tirelessly in the community. Shannon Godward, she received the Honorable Distinction for Fire Service. Not only does she protect us, she sets a great example through her service. Domena Elgin Mills received honorary distinction for their dedicated service to seniors. Thank you to our leaders, and we're very proud of them. Thank you, Karen, for such a great initiative. It inspires our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Waterloo. Thank you very much. I recently met with the Elder Abuse Prevention Ontario, a provincial not-for-profit organization that is sounding the alarm on the urgent issues impacting the safety and security of older adults in Ontario. Ontario seniors have experienced new and unimaginable levels of isolation during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, from isolation to neglect to physical abuse and financial fraud. In Ontario alone, EAPO Senior Safety Line reported a 250% increase in elder abuse calls in 2020, almost 1,000 cases. EAPO has six main calls to action. Apply an elder abuse prevention lens and invest in prevention strategies when fixing elder care. And they would like to see their pre-pandemic funding reinstated. Protect the financial well-being and fraud prevention for older adults in Ontario. Support a network of regional and local elder abuse prevention. Demand a seniors care transfer from the federal government. Achieve funding stability to support programming for elder abuse prevention and enhance accountability by naming a provincial advocate or ombudsman that reports directly to the legislature. Of note, our colleague in Kitchener Centre has introduced legislation that would create a seniors advocate who would be an independent officer of the legislature to fulfil this call to action. I hope that all members of this legislature will listen to these important calls to action and work together to address the rapid rise 
in incidents of elder abuse across Ontario. And I would like to sincerely thank the Elder Abuse Prevention in, in Ontario group for doing important work to keep elders safe. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, communities such as Finley Creek and Sitzville are rapidly developing in my riding of Carleton. Currently, Catholic students in Finley Creek are being bused to schools in surrounding areas because there's no Catholic elementary school in the community. École secondaire catholique Paul de Marais. Paul de Marais, école Catholic school. But this school stands out for their sports, arts, and business streams. CIEL creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and leadership opens doors for students to adapt and develop in a fast-paced, changing world. A goal of mine is to see more schools built in Carleton in order to support the growing population of young families. Building the first Catholic elementary school in Finley Creek and expanding École secondaire catholique Paul des Marais would alleviate the pressure on the surrounding schools in these communities. On October 5th, I released two petitions. The first petition is for our government to approve funding to build the first Catholic elementary school in Finley Creek. The second petition is for the approval to fund a critical student expansion at École secondaire catholique Paul des Marais in Stittsville. One of the reasons I ran for office is because I wanted to see more schools built in Carleton. I have already successfully secured funding to build four brand new schools. I've had several meetings with the school boards and with the minister to discuss the need for schools to support an expanding student population. I encourage everyone to visit my, web visit my website and sign these petitions at goldiempp.ca. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Timmins. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. We will all know as members of this assembly, small businesses across this province have been really having a hard time adjusting to what's happened in this pandemic. It's been tough for them on all kinds of levels, uh, and that has really taken a toll on their bottom line. That's why we, under Andrew Horvath and New Democrats, have been calling on this government in order to increase the amount of funding available uh, to the small business community so that they're able to adjust to what's happened to them. Some of them have had to take on additional expense as a result, as a result of screening, which is a good thing. Uh, businesses in my community, as yours, understand why this is necessary, but there is a certain amount of cost associated to it, and their traffic is down. They don't have the amount of business that they had before, especially with some of the limits that have been imposed on them. So that's why the Chamber of Commerce of the City of Timmins has been asking us to ask the government in order to be able to increase the funding available to small businesses. These businesses are the backbone to our community. I think we all understand that. And we need to make sure that we provide them with the support that's necessary to allow them to get through uh, this particular phase of the pandemic. Hopefully, we're going to be out of this uh, in a not too distant future, but we want to make sure when we come out on the other side that the members of the Timmins Chamber of Commerce, those small businesses in our town that work so hard, are going to be there in order to benefit from the rebound that will happen at the end of this pandemic. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for York Centre. Thank you, Speaker. What's happening in the province of Ontario and Canada, and what's been happening for the last 19 months, is unthinkable. Nurses, first responders, and workers from every field are being fired for refusing to undergo a medical procedure. The government is dictating how many people we may host at our homes and which customers we may or may not serve in our businesses. We're forced to, sh we're forced to show ID and scan a QR code to sit down for a bowl of soup at Tim Hortons. I submit that if government subjects us to these extreme measures, then we must insist that it does so on a basis of a fair narrative. COVID is a very serious respiratory virus, it can be very dangerous to some folks, mainly those with serious comorbidities, particularly diabetes. COVID is real and serious, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't objectively look at the data and craft public policy that's based on a fair narrative. On October 15, Statistics Canada published its COVID excess mortality analysis for 2020. Over 80% of COVID-related deaths were in long-term care homes, where on average, statistically, residents are in their last year of life. 90% of deaths between March to July 2020 were among patients with at least one serious pre-existing condition, mostly dementia. Every death is tragic and every life is precious, but it doesn't mean that we should redesign our lives and bodily autonomy, privacy and mobility when we know where the risk is. Government must protect long-term care homes and build hospital capacity, but end the alarmism 
end the fear-mongering and end the false narrative. I'm asking the government, own up to the narrative, leave Ontarians alone, and end this nightmare. The next member's statement, the member for Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. And I ask everyone here to join us in celebrating Ontario Dental Hygiene Week, which runs next week from October 17th through the 23rd. The growing evidence linking oral health to overall health high highlights the importance of access to oral health, including regular dental and, and dental hygiene checkups. Dental hygienists have a distinctive clinical role in preventing gum disease and tooth decay, making a significant contribution to a person's well-being and overall health. Dental hygienists not only clean teeth, but they provide a, a ses professional assessments that include oral cancer screening, treatment planning, individual oral care, care evaluations, customized preventative home care programs, and lastly, they offer advice on other health areas such as nutrition and smoking cessation. As regulated health care professionals, dental hygienists follow stringent rules and standards set by the regulatory college, ensuring the public service receives safe and ongoing comprehensive oral care at all times, including during a pandemic. The Ontario Dental Hygienists Association supports oral health care initiatives provided by the Ontario government, including the Ontario Seniors Dental Care Program, which ensures Ontarians in need of support have access to oral health care services. Again, I want to wish the Ontario Dental Hygienists all the best during Ontario Dental Hygiene Week and thank them for all their valuable contribution to the health care system in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Essex. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Speaker, as members would know, October is Community Support Month in the province of Ontario. Uh, community support centres support over one million Ontarians each year, including seniors and people with disabilities. They help clients live independently in their own homes and communities for as long as possible and reduce the burden uh, of families, family caregivers, and the burden on our health care system. Speaker, as Ontario's population ages, community support services will become even more important. So it is my honour today to give a real big shout out to uh, the Essex Community Service Centre. Uh, led by my good friend Tracy Bailey, uh, incredible leadership there. Uh, also, Denise Cassidy, who has uh, pivoted the organization through COVID to provide virtual care and support uh, for residents. Uh, Samantha Hughes, who is the CareLink coordinator. Carly Wood, who is changing lives with diabetic foot care, giving people freedom and comfort. Uh, and Murray Toffelmeyer, who is the land uh, landlord of the facility, but is also an incredible corporate sponsor has made incredible donations uh, to the Community Support Centre. There are also over 300 volunteers uh, that on a, a weekly, annual basis uh, donate their time and volunteer their time to make that organization work. Speaker, we are so better off uh, for having uh, the Community Support Centre in, in Lakeshore and Essex County, and I know across the province and, and members' communities too as well. Uh, we want to recognize them all today, give them a great big thank you, uh, and uh, uh, thanks for making our communities uh, a better and healthier place to live. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Speaker. October marks Small Business Week, and this government from day one has always had the backs of small businesses. We started off by lowering the small business tax, and we went on to support these businesses during the global pandemic with programs like the Small Business um, Grant and, of course, the Digital Main Street. And I just heard over this past week when I talked to Kevin Gee from the first, uh, first Aid and CPR training that he benefited from the Digital uh, Main Street program, and I also want to thank him for all his work and uh, all the things that he's doing in his business. Our downtown businesses via the BIA, a downtown BIA, have also benefited from the Digital Main Street program. But this is also a week to commemorate the great entrepreneurship that is our, our communities. And I am so honoured to live and represent a community that is so dedicated to supporting our entrepreneurs. In fact, Barrie is home to the Accelerate Summit, which is Central Ontario's premier business event to attract hundreds and thousands of entrepreneurs. This year, it's the eighth annual Virtual Accelerate Summit. It's being run by 
by Georgian's Henry Burnick Entrepreneurship Centre. So thank you, Sarah Betham, for all your work on that uh, on that summit. And it's done in partnership with Investberry, which is co-sponsored by Small Business Centre, Grow Vantage, South Georgian Bay Small Business Entrepreneurship Centre, Berry Chamber of Commerce, and Investberry and Invest in a Spell in You. Speaker, this is really an example of the great might that is our small businesses in Berry. And so this week, if you can, please support your small businesses, whether it's Deb and Ralph at Fork and Plate, Rob Saunders at Cove Cafe, uh, whether it's Wild Wings in Barry or Jennifer Dwyer at the House Grill. Please support your small businesses. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker Mer Meredith Snyder is was a longtime Perth County Councillor and former Perth County Warden. He passed in June of this year. Mert was a lifelong resident of the, of the Wallace Ward in North Perth, where he owned and operated a family farm. He truly was a dedicated and hardworking family man, farmer, and public servant. In fact, his time as an elected official spanned 39 years. He served on municipal councils, including 10 as Wallace Township Reeve, 18 as Perth County Councillor, and two as Perth County Warden. I sat next to him during my time on North Perth Council. Mert knew the importance of rural life he knew firsthand how farmers contribute to Ontario's nutritional and economic well-being. It's no wonder that he was a champion of the agricultural sector. He demonstrated his commitment by serving on the Palmerston Agriculture Society, the Perth County Beef Farmers, and as an advisory councillor with the Ontario Cattlemen's Association. Residents of Perth County and those in the agriculture sector could not have asked for anyone more committed to their community. He represented them well. I wanted to extend our condolences to his family and all those who knew him and worked, and worked with him. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.